Revelation chapter 12. Uh, heart is rather heavy with this message. Just thinking about this message makes my heart heavy. Most Christians don't understand what is ahead. Most are just thinking that they're just waiting for the rapture with not any thought concerning the terrible persecution that is coming. Now, before you become critical and think that I'm saying there's no rapture, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying before the rapture occurs, before that event takes place, the church is going to suffer great persecution. To what extent? We don't know. The scripture is not clear. To what extent the church will suffer. But the church will endure some persecution. And God is allowing this persecution to awaken the church. Now for you that don't know, there's a we have a new website. Uh, pillarsforchrist.org That's pillarsforchrist.org and um, we have some articles there and things. We have a blog where we are sharing what the Lord puts upon our heart. And so we encourage you to go and uh, see what is there. Revelation chapter 12 I'm going to begin with verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. Reading again, verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Great persecution is coming to the church. You can see why our heart is heavy. This is not one of those messages where you get happy, get excited. This is this is a message of sorrow because again, we don't know the extent of the suffering that the church is going to have to endure. Now, it does say here in verse 14, To the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half time from the face of the serpent. 
So we see here that God is going to bring a great deliverance to the church in the midst of this persecution. Now, whether this is a physical place, I think this is more of a spiritual place. This is a state of a place spiritually where God is going to bring his people in the midst of persecution, where they are going to be strengthened, where they're going to be encouraged, under pressure. The church is not ready for rapture. The church is not ready for rapture. Many think they're just waiting for the rapture. But if you read your scripture, if you read the word of God properly, you'll see the church is asleep. And, listen, the church is lukewarm. The church is going to be spewed out into the tribulation. The first three and a half years, for time, times, and a half time, for three and a half years from those that are on fire. Those that are on fire are going to go in. That's the man child, the overcomers. They're going to go in. They're accepted. They're going to be swallowed up in life. Mortality is going to be swallowed up in immortality. Now, that is only going to be given to those that are on fire, hot on fire. But the lukewarm are going to be spewed out if you take the time to listen to the messages the Lord gives us, you will see that we just recently shared a message swallowed up or spewed out. Are you going to be swallowed up in the Lord or are you going to be spewed out? What determines that is are you on fire? He said he'd rather you be cold. But we see that the church has the disposition that they are rich, increased with goods, and has need of nothing. But the Lord says you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, you're naked, and you don't even know it. What's the purpose of this message? To prepare you for what's coming. I don't plan on being here. I do not plan on being here to be persecuted for three and a half years. I'm planning on getting out of here. We see in the scripture that his bride hath made herself ready. She made herself ready. Now you cannot be making yourself ready if you're asleep. Amen? How can you be making yourself ready if you're sleeping? You can't. Now Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. This is the same thing that he said, at least the first part of it, what he said to his disciples when they fell asleep in the garden before he was taken, arrested, and crucified. Jesus said to his disciples, watch and pray. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. He came to them, found them sleeping. 
He left, went and prayed, came back, found him sleeping again. Amen? Church is fast asleep. I'm not saying you're asleep in the physical. I'm saying the scripture is clear that the church is asleep spiritually. We don't have any influence on the world around us. In fact, the world has more influence on the church today than the church has upon the world. But in the midst of this persecution, the time of this persecution, God is going to make a way, just as he did for the children of Israel as he brought them out of Egypt on eagle's wings. Amen? God is going to do this for his church. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. That's the bride of Christ, the man-child. Verse 14, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. What's the wilderness? What was... The wilderness in the Old Testament. God said, I brought you into the wilderness to prove you, to test you. Amen? The, the church today will not allow the Lord to get them ready. He won't, they won't, they won't listen. They won't hear the truth. So they're going to go through terrible persecution to get them into a place where they'll pray to get them into a place where they will surrender to the truth, where they'll open their spiritual ears and listen to what the Spirit is saying. The church today does not have a value for the truth. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's, a, that's, the, that's the extent of their experience. Don't ever talk about going on to perfection. Don't ever talk about the fullness. Don't ever talk about the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Don't ever talk about being a perfect man. Let us go on unto perfection. Amen? You don't hear that today. You do not hear the message of perfection. Last church service I went to, they were singing when the saints come marching in, and I was thinking, Lord, this is when the saints go dragging in. This is not marching. This is not on fire for the Lord. When the saints come dragging in. But God is going to get the church into a place where it's going to pray going to seek his face under the pressure saddens my heart to think that God's people God's precious people are going to face great persecution Now, these are God's people. You say it can't happen. Everything's fine here in America. Yeah, but for how long? You know, just the Ebola thing they're talking about. What happens if there's an outbreak? If there's an epidemic in the United States? Schools will shut down. Everything will change, folks. There'll be curfews. There'll be 
quarantines. I believe with all my heart it's God that's holding this thing back. He's the one that's holding back the persecution. You say, Brother Joseph, where's this persecution coming from? If you haven't been watching, Islam has already taken over Europe. It can happen right here in the United States. It already has in the White House. We've got a Muslim in the, in the White House right now. President of the United States, a Muslim. Just a matter of time before the whole nation will be forced to bow down and worship the beast. Amen? If you take the time to look, you'll see in Zechariah, Scripture talks about the curse that goes out over all the earth. That word curse in the original Hebrew is the word Allah. God is allowing this curse to go out over all the earth. It says it's a flying scroll. The Quran. It's a flying scroll. It's coming, folks. And it's not because God is helping Islam. But he sure is allowing it. God says, if you won't serve me in grace, you will serve under the merciless law of Islam. Do you know any other religion or any other government on the earth that beheads people? I don't. And the scripture says, those that do not receive the mark, they will not receive the mark of the beast. They will not receive the 666. That They will not become the merchandise of the New World Order. They will not become slaves. That they will be beheaded. And there's no other religion, no other government, no other ideology on the earth at this time that beheads people other than Islam. You say it can't happen in America. I believe we're not far from hearing that Muslims are going to strap bombs on themselves and walk right into the malls in the United States of America. Oh yes, folks, it's coming. It is coming. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's coming, folks. You want to make sure your steps are ordered of the Lord. Don't just go where you want to go. Be led by the Spirit of God. Because you could walk right into a trap being presumptuous and self-willed and going where you want to go. Now the Bible says we are to be led by the Spirit and we are, our steps are to be ordered of the Lord. We don't just go where we want to go. And let me just say this as I'm closing. This will help you. The Scripture says, let the peace of God rule your heart. If you jump in your car and you don't have a peace, God is letting you know something. You need to pay attention to that, folks. If you don't have peace, there is a reason why you don't have peace. Let the peace of God rule your heart. The scripture says, go out with peace, or go out with joy, be led forth with peace. Your feet to be guided into the way of peace. Amen. We're living in perilous times. Perilous times. 
It's going to get worse before it gets better.